So today I'm installing a cryo rig um, R1 Ultimate CPU cooler on this i7 2600K um, and I'm just starting to put the mounting hardware on well, I've just finished putting the mounting hardware on actually I've put the back plate on and put the screws through um, and on the instructions you can see here for Intel there's two orientations which you can have the cooler. Uh, one fan at the front there and they'll be blowing out so that will be um, blowing this way out the back of the case. And then the other orientation is sucking air up from the graphics cards down here and blowing it out the top of the case. Now, I usually put my CPU coolers in uh, this orientation here so that they're blowing out the back of the case, which means the brackets need to go this way around. Now, as you can see here, um, if I was to try and uh, replace the CPU um, while these brackets were still installed, um, well, it isn't possible because um, the uh, bracket gets in the way of the lever which is really annoying so every time you wanted to change the CPU you'd have to take this side of the bracket off which is alright for like a normal person who's only going to use it once and then leave the colour on for ages but for people like me who do a lot of benchmarking who change processes quite regularly is very annoying and so it's not the best mounting hardware ever but I have to admit it does look very nice and the quality of it is really nice all the uh, mounting hardware is metal so that's the first update on the uh, R1 Ultimate now I will be uh, testing this cooler against the Thermalrite Silver Arrow which I have up here I'm going to be using the same thermal paste on both of them, which is this horrible rubbish here. It's ceramic based thermal paste, uh, pretty bog standard. I'll be using this for all of my heat sink tests. I will be using the stock fans which came with each cooler, so the cryo rig ones I'll be using the cryo rig fans. And for the silver arrow I will be using the uh, silver arrow fans, which is two of these. Um, for my other cooler reviews, I will use their stock fans as well. I've got a uh, Alpen von Matterhorn, which uses a fan like this one in the back of here, this blue one. And then I have another thermal right cooler, which has a similar fan to this, but it only goes up to, I think it's 1200 RPM. Uh, this one actually goes up to 2300 RPM, because I've got the uh, Silver Arrow Extreme, you see. So it has much faster fans on it. So that's the first update on my CPU coolers anyway. So there we go. Right, as you can see, I've got the cooler sort of in, but I'm having some issues with RAM clearance with the front fan, which I kind of expected because I have RAM clearance issues with the Silver Arrow as well. Um, this is the RAM I usually use, which is... Uh, a Vexia M-Power RAM as you can see it's not particularly tall to be honest I've got some standard Kingston HyperX here and uh, the Vexia isn't actually much taller at all so I'm going to try this Kingston HyperX in and uh, see if that fits underneath the front fan uh, you can actually mount the heat sink uh, with the fans on because there's these slots here that you can sort of see all the way down to the screw. Um, however, um, it is exceptionally tricky to see where you're putting the screwdriver uh, when you're sort of looking down from above. It's very difficult to see whether these holes are actually lined up or not and whether the cooler, the actual uh, bottom of the cooler 
is um, on the top of the CPU or not um, because it's quite well hidden as you can see the heat pipes are sort of bent back slightly right I'm really unhappy with this it's starting to piss me off a bit now as you can see the mount actually moves up and down even though it's fully tightened up which is ridiculous and I'm not entirely sure what's happened there with these little standoff things don't seem to be tall enough so when I put the cooler on these screws the screws here don't even come anywhere near to the holes like they're hovering about one or two millimeters above them and the springs on these screws are just absolutely ridiculously um, sprung they're way way over sprung really really thick tight springs for no reason at all really um, so I'm going to actually have to take the motherboard out of the case. Uh, I have taken my graphics cards out already so that I could see uh, what on earth was going on and why I couldn't get it to screw in properly. I had to take the graphics cards out and now I'm just taking the entire motherboard out of the PC which is uh, quite ridiculous uh, for a CPU cooler installation really. This is very bad. Right, after being a massive spanner and putting these on the wrong way up, I've now put them the right way up with the CryoRig logo facing up and the cooler now actually goes on with clearance to spare, which I'll show you now. Now, as you can see in there, it's actually sitting in the screw holes now and rocking on top so that you can actually screw them in instead of before where it was sitting above the uh, the holes so that's much better now however it isn't particularly clear in the instructions and um, from an aesthetics point of view I would have thought these bars here would go the other way around because they've got nice soft edges on the other side you see and all these edges are like the sharp edges which you would have thought pointed down um, so yeah that was a bit of a cock up there and it probably would have been slightly easier if I'd done it the right way around the first time but I did watch a uh, high tech legions video to check where I went wrong and I did notice that when he was putting it on inside his case and was trying to line it up he did actually edit that part of the video out and uh, cut to him with it just magically held in place um, when he was trying to put the CPU cooler and line it up with the fans installed and his graphics card so I reckon that must have taken him quite a while to be fair um, but obviously I'm going to leave this in partly to make myself look like a spanner so you can laugh and uh, partly just to see what you have to go through with some CPU coolers sometimes uh, stuff that other YouTubers might leave out uh, not knocking him or anything, I mean he has made a good review and he does compare it to the uh, Noctua cooler. Anyway, I'm going to put some thermal paste on it now that I can actually attach it to the processor. And we'll see how it performs, hopefully. At last I have the cooler installed on the CPU. So it's uh, not going anywhere now, which is good. Now another thing you have to be very careful of with this cooler is the clearance of any VRM heat sinks. As you can see on my M power here, when it focuses, if it's going to focus, the lighting is not actually very good in here. Um, it is incredibly close to that VRM heat sink there. There is actually a tiny little gap, but it is exceptionally small and if this VRM heatsink at the back was any taller it wouldn't actually fit and it would foul on these heat pipes here uh, so that is another thing to consider when buying this cooler as well 
Uh, it does look quite nice, I have to admit. It's got sort of silvery coloured fins on the front. And from the back side, it's uh, black, as you saw before. So I'm going to put the fans back on it now, put it back in the case, practically rebuild my entire PC, uh, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully, well, I'll definitely find it easier to put my silver arrow in. Uh, but is th this is the first time I've ever put this CPU cooler on, so I'll remember this in future. Right, I have got both fans installed now. You can see how high they are now. I've got the front one as low as I can possibly get it, and the middle one as low as I can possibly get it as well. Uh, you can see that that front one's actually sitting on the uh, first uh, stick of RAM there. You can see all the clearances underneath. It's all exceptionally uh, tight. I've got both fans wired in uh, to the fan splitter thing so that both of them are controlled by the main uh, CPU fan header so that I can run them both at the, the exact same speed all of the time I'll do the same thing for, uh, for the other coolers that I test as well if they have two fans that is this cooler has two fans obviously uh, I'm going to put it back in the case now Oh, another thing as well is the width of it, as you can see, it doesn't quite cover that top PCIe slot uh, from above, so it isn't quite as wide as the thermal right silver arrow, but um, it will still uh, obstruct that top port, I think, we'll have to see. At last, I've got everything in. I've got my graphics cards back in, the cooler back in. That, this uh, grey HyperX RAM actually goes really well with this cooler, I have to say. Um, but, what a fast to get it in. Hope it's worth it. I'm going to go back into my room, plug it in now, and uh, test the performance with this 2600k see what the temperatures are like um, and then probably tomorrow now because as you can see it's completely dark outside I'll uh, test the thermal right silver arrow on it again Whew. After last night's failed attempt to run these tests, as it got a bit too late, uh, I'm going to run this test today. I'm using the Cryo Rig R1 Ultimate on cheap thermal paste on a 2600K, which is at 4.6 GHz on 1.36 volts. Um, the ambient temperature is 27 degrees in the room, which is quite hot. I'm going to use that as uh, as like a delta temperature, so when I work out the temps, it will be the same for all the coolers I'll be testing. Uh, to test the uh, coolers um, and the temperatures, I'm actually beginning. I'm going to be using uh, Asus Real Bench. Uh, this is because it stresses both the GPUs and the sheet CPU as well, unlike XTU which will only stress the CPU, so this will get the maximum amount of heat in the case, even though I've actually got uh, no side panel on there. So I'm going to run a 15 minute test, there we go, Hit focus now, uh, on each cooler. I'm also going to be doing some thermal paste testing as well. I'm going to be testing cheap white thermal paste, which is on at the moment, that's just ceramic based stuff. Uh, I'll be testing the thermal paste which came with the cooler itself and I'll also be testing uh, thermal grizzly crynaut thermal paste. So I'm going to start the test now. That's going there, so that'll stress both the CPU and the GPUs. You can see here the CPU load is at 100% and the temperatures are climbing. So I'll come back at the end of this test and uh, see what the maximum temperature was. 
Right then, you can see here it's just finished the test. Ambient temperature is still 27 degrees. Uh, it's finished the stress test now. It's been going for 15 minutes. Uh, you can see all the settings are the same and stuff. Maximum temperature it got to was 75 degrees on the hottest core, 71 degrees on the uh, coolest core. So that's it for now. This was the Cryo Rig R1 Ultimate on uh, normal thermal paste.